here's how I do a quick record, mix and master of a voiceover. Right, so I use Logic. Now you can use any door really. Um, I'm just very familiar with Logic. I've been using it for a long, long time and I have a template set up. So I can go to my templates. I've already set up a single audio lane using a 48 hertz sample rate. So a nice um, high sample rate. I choose the input to match the input that my microphone is going into um, and then hit record. Check, check, check. I'm just checking, making sure that the peaking levels there are between minus 18 and minus six. Yeah, they're not going too high, they're not too low. Now I'm using a little remove silence technique. And what it does is it removes any information below a certain dB threshold. Um, it just deletes it for you. Then I use a shuffle left function. So everything's gone to the left. Um, now this does make it a little bit unnatural because then any sort of pauses and gaps that I've made um, to the rhythm of what you'd expect the, the cadence of someone speaking would be, that's removed when you remove, um, when you remove that, when you remove all the silences out. So then I go back through listening, making sure the cadence is there. Now, what you can do at this point as well is remove some of the breath, some of the um, some of the ahs. Now, I've deliberately not provided the uh, the audio for this part because otherwise it would be competing with, with what I'm doing, telling you how, how I do it. What I can tell you here is that when I, if you click the track header, well, at the start it's a click the track header on the left, which highlights all of the individual clips. And then what I'm doing as I go along, uh, from left to right, you know, through through the timeline, I'm deselecting various clips by uh, just there, like by holding down shift and clicking them. And then what that allows me to do then is drag the remaining clips on the right hand side further out, like that, just to give it a little bit of a break. And I keep doing that as I go along. So one of the workflows I use, if I want to delete things, then I'll either use um, the scissor tool. Sometimes I'll use the marquee tool like that, hold down uh, command on, on the keyboard and just drag and then delete, or you can mute, or it's a great function tool, really quick editing tool. Logic has loads of functions. I, I don't use all of the functions that Logic has to do all this, but I do find that it definitely speeds up my, my workflow. Um, scrolling up and down or left and right, holding down the alt key as well. That's a great way to zoom in and out, up and down, um, you know, horizontally as well as, as vertically like that. So ticking away here, just making sure that uh, the cadence is there, that I'm getting rid of any ums and ahs, that um, there's no sort of pops or clicks or background noises, anything like that. Now this is actually a voiceover for a project uh, which I can't disclose yet because uh, we haven't released it yet. And there will be a professional voiceover um, completed for it. Not that I don't do professional voiceovers, they have actually have a, a voice actor for it. But the reason I'm doing this is, I think I'm editing out, just here I'm editing out something I, I, I repeated myself because I stumbled over my words, which I do. Uh, in fact, I'm amazed I haven't done that so far on this recording. Um, the, uh, the voice actor that will be, that will be um, uh, providing the voiceover for this project, for the film that I'm editing, uh, for the, well, for the promo that I'm producing, uh, hasn't been done yet, but I want to carry on with the start of the edit. So I'm doing this quick voiceover, one, so that I can crack on with the, with the film, with the video editing, um, and two, so that I can show you guys how I go about doing this. And it's good because you can see how it's done. Maybe there's some of you out there who, who want to do it yourself. Uh, also, it's a way to show um, potential clients or, you know, prospective clients. So some of the work that goes into uh, producing a voiceover. I think it's important for clients to understand what it is that that um, goes on behind the scenes because uh, I think in some cases, you know, I think it's just just a, a quick kind of click and click and point job or just a you know press the sound good button and away we go. It doesn't quite work like that. Anyway, so there's me. I've tidied up all of the all of the sections. I'm happy with. Uh, just removing that little click at the end. I'm happy with the cadence. There it is all now. So I'm checking to see the full length. Um, and you can see it's 
well, it's just over one minute 10, I think. If I click Z uh, on the keyboard, Z on the keyboard, it puts it all into the same window. Click U, I click the track header to select all of the, the regions and then press U to put the cycle around the whole thing. Now I've selected a, um, a template um, for my voiceovers. Now this is a specific template that I've created using stock and uh, paid for plugins. Um, sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't. I don't really, didn't really need to use the dialogue denoise. D-click I do like for voiceovers, gets rid of those little mouth pops and clicks and tongue and spit on your, on your teeth and things that you don't need. Uh, don't need that EQ because that's for a different microphone I use. Um, I do like to have a bit of, well actually I use a two compressor chain. So I use EQ, compression, EQ, compression, EQ, sometimes depends on the microphone, depends on the environment. But two compressors definitely, one to get rid of just the overall, just to tame the overall peaks and then another to um, to just polish it off a little bit at, at, at the end. This EQ um, just gives a slight lift at the very high frequencies, give it some air uh, because the microphone I'm using is just a little bit dull. Yeah, so I actually have a, a specific voiceover for my studio, which just it know, I know the room modes in my room, so I know how my room sounds, so I've tuned an EQ just to, just to make it sound like I haven't recorded it in this room. Um, and then finally I put a, for the sort of mastering, in inverted commas, it's not a serious master, but I do know the peaks, I don't want the peaks over at minus one, minus two, and then the LUFS I put as minus 16, um, and then I let it go through, have a look. I can adjust the output of the various plugins to make sure that my uh, clipping level or my my uh, dB uh, level is to a certain uh, dB threshold. And the dB threshold is saying it needs to be over 6 dB here. So I'm just, I'll pump it up by maybe 5. Um, you know, between five and six, you can reset that and then we can see whether the long term and the short term LUFS are in that sort of minus 16. Now again, this is for, um, this is just as a demo really, so I'm able to um, to carry on with video editing, so it doesn't need to be exact. But this um, plugin, the loudness meter plugin from Waves is, in my experience, the best one out there. You, it's paid for, um, and unfortunately with Waves, you know, you have to pay every for updates and stuff as well, but it just makes the whole process that much easier, that much quicker. So yeah, uh, then I go back, have a look at the full project, make sure that my loop markers are in um, the whole project. I'm bouncing to a you know 48 kilohertz file. I'm not using normalization. I'm not including it in the project. Give it a name. I'm just gonna record, just uh, save it straight out and then that will be ready to import into Final Cut.